Okay, so let's talk about three-way fridge in your motorhome. We're gonna explain how it works, how to check to make sure it's working, some top tips, and some hints to get the best out of the fridge in your motorhome. Stay tuned, and we'll talk all about it. Okay, so first of all, why do they call it three-way? Well, that's because it uses three sources of power. That's uh, your 12 volt or your engine battery mains if you're plugged into the mains at 230 volts, and it can also run on gas. And that's what creates the chemical reaction which cools the fridge. But to get into some detail, we need to get into some science. Okay, so some science, three-way fridge. What it uses is three sources of energy or heat to create a evaporation within the chemicals inside the fridge. So 12 volts, your vehicle battery, 230 volts directly from the mains or gas. And what this does is it kind of creates a, a chemical reaction called evaporation, which is why the fridge in your motorhome is called an evaporation fridge, is the more technical term instead of three-way, because you can get a two-way evaporation fridge. And your fridge at home is called a compressor fridge, because what it does is it uses compression, and that's why you've got a little motor in the back, that's why your fridge at home will make a noise, and your fridge in your motorhome will not make any noise, and that's why a lot of people think their fridge doesn't work, like myself because it uses evaporation and heat, not necessarily a compressor. So, first thing you need to understand is how this evaporation works. Now, the science bit's gonna be very short, but it's useful to understand how it works, how your evaporation process works, so you can troubleshoot your fridge and also set your expectations because your fridge in your remote home, it's not like the fridge at home. And one of the most common mistakes, and I know because I've made them all, is assuming that your fridge in your motorhome works exactly the same as the fridge at home. So let's do a little bit of science, and please, it's only a little bit, so it is useful to know, and then we'll get into some top tips and tricks and understanding how your motorhome fridge works. Now, let's get into the details of how your fridge evaporation works. So using the three forms of, of heat, either uh, voltage or gas, the generator heats the ammonia and water mix to extract the ammonia the removal of the remaining water vapour and bubbles occurs in the next step. The separator consists of winding uphill tubes to pop the bubbles and rid excess water molecules which isolates the ammonia. Now the vapour is completely separated from the water. The condenser, also known as a heat exchange, takes this hot ammonia gas and changes it into liquid ammonia through a cooling and condensing process. In the evaporator is where room temperature liquefies the ammonia, enters the chamber and becomes mixed with hydrogen. This portal pressure of hydrogen manipulates the total force which changes the vapour pressure. The boiling point of ammonia is then lowered, causing it to evaporate, thus removing heat from the evaporator. In the absorber, that's where the water absorbs the ammonia gas, the process begins where the gases flow into upward twisting pipes until they reach the water at the top where the ammonia combines with the water it creates an ammonia water mix and hydrogen solution. The two are separated in the absorber as the hydrogen moves to the top and the ammonia gathers at the bottom. And then the whole process starts all over again. So that's the process flow in a diagram that looks a bit more like you're going to see in the back of your fridge. So if you're enjoying the videos and enjoying watching me, then click subscribe and the notification and comment and like, etc. Doesn't cost you anything, but it helps the channel. So back to the main feature. Okay, so emission time. I didn't know none of this. I actually just did some research because when I first bought Millie, I thought the fridge didn't work. And it wasn't until purely by chance, I left it in plugged in by mains and left it overnight and left some water in the ice tray. Did I come back and I had ice? because my expectation was the fridge should make a noise and it doesn't, it's silent. Your evaporation process is totally silent. So, which is great for motorhomes and caravans because I'm sleeping in the same room as my fridge. I don't want a compressor going off all the time. So the three-way fridge is perfect for sleeping next to, but because my expectations were so set to a domestic fridge, I thought my fridge didn't work. So, you know, do your research which you are, you're watching this video, so you're not gonna make any stupid mistakes like I did, yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at what does that process actually look like in the back of your fridge. 
Nice oh, grills removed. Uh, you know, it's worth just giving them a clean mixture. They've they're not blocked up because your three-way fridge does require air circulation for it to work. And then we'll have a look inside here. So that's the gas burner. Okay, so that top bit looks like a radiator. That's the condenser. And that's the condenser. We're checking to make sure again. That looks there's nothing, no dirt. No rubbish or anything that's stuck between it because it needs them gaps for it to work properly. Just up around there, that's so that's your the generator or the, the chimney or the, the heating source inside that. That's asbestos, that nasty stuff wrapped up. But inside there, that's your kind of tube there that creates the, the heat. But inside, wrapped up, is your two heating elements, and at the bottom of that, you can just see is the gas stove or the boiler so that's the evaporator container that holds all the ammonia and the water at the end of this process see that wire going in to what looks like you know, uh, inside the actual fridge that's your thermostat and that pipe there that's what creates the coolant in the fridge the actual cooling process so again make sure there's no leaks or anything inside again there's no leaks i've already checked this and of course i know it works but that's your thermostat cable in there that's going inside the fridge which again can be replaced if required and then kind of bendy pipes uh, again looks like i don't know like a radiator or maybe shy that's your uh evaporator so first thing to check if your fridge isn't working is having your fridge on mains and just see if there's any heat on the back of the fridge. Your actual fridge should be getting warm for it to get cold, if that makes sense. But you should be able to feel the heat. And this is why it's important to have these vents clear of any obstruction because you need a continuously airflow inside the back of the fridge for it to work or to function a, uh, efficiently. So there's your three-way fridge and how it works. Now, understanding how it works, you can now do some more troubleshooting and also set your expectation. For starters, your three-way fridge can take up to 10 hours to cool properly, which is why you always recommend it to plug it into mains the night before you go away and before you put the food into the fridge. So put it onto mains before you go away and get the fridge nice and cold before you go away. Also, your expectations of running it on 12 volt. People will put it onto 12 volt while they're driving. Make sure you understand the control panel because even with, with Millie, I have to switch it on to trailer and then switch the fridge onto 12 volt or the battery picture. Then I know that it's running directly from the vehicle battery only when the engine's running. So technically it's not actually the vehicle battery, it's the engine that's producing the 12 volts. Now that 12 volts is enough to keep the fridge cool but you won't get the fridge cold if that makes sense. So always plug it onto mains before you go away. Maybe that like the night before, if you can do, you know, park it on your drive. If you look like me, I can park mine on the drive, plug into mains, leave it on the night before. I pretty much have beer in it quite a lot, so it's on all the time. And then drive away and then make sure you put it onto 12 volts, make sure you put it onto trailer, and then that should keep the fridge going till you get to your destination and either light it on gas or put it straight back into mains. Now, the other thing is for your fridge to work, your van does have to be level within about two degrees variable. Now it'll still work on 12 volts while you're driving because the liquid's moving around. But if you're static for any more longer than an hour, it recommends that you have your van completely level using a spirit level. And that's because of the evaporation process has to be balanced at either end of the chamber. So if you've got it either this way or that way or that way or this way, it won't work or it won't be efficient. So you have to have it completely level, not just to light it on gas for the actual, actual evaporation to work. So if the fridge isn't working, the first thing to check is to make sure A, all the fuses have, are working, any isolation switches are switched on, Check if you've got it on mains, or you're getting any temperature at the back of the fridge. Uh, you know, on, on 230 volts, there's actually quite so it gets warm at the back of that fridge. You can actually touch the condenser and you can feel that heat. So now I know it's definitely working and it's working on, on mains.
fridge, switch to mains, leave it on for a bit. And if you go into the freezer, this should be getting cold. And already your feet, I can feel there's a chill to that. How to light it on gas. First of all, make sure it's turned on off the so electrics. That. Most of these fridges will have a gas isolating switch in milli. It's inside the cupboard here. Make sure the gas is on. If you look inside the fridge, at the back of the fridge, you'll see a little glass window. And then to light milli, what you do is turn the gas on, hold it in, light it a few times. Look inside the little gas. And then you should see the little blue, blue light. That's the fridge. Lit on gas. Might take a couple of times, but watching the little glass while you're lighting it, you'll see it spark and eventually you should see it light. So there you go, three-way fridge. If you found the video useful, then let your friends know. Please share the video. Click subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Comment, like, all that kind of jazz. Yeah, it doesn't cost you anything. It helps the channel and also makes me feel good about myself and also motivates me to do more videos. So don't forget, please click subscribe and uh, comment below if you find anything useful or just say hi. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot. Till the next time, YouTubers. See you later. Bye.